Hey everybody, welcome to The Real United States. And uh, I'm going to make something relatively simple today. Um, this is a salmon mousse or a, uh, a smoked fish pate, if you will. Um, there is a difference between a pate and a mousse. It's relatively minor um, and essentially has to do with consistency. Um, a pate is a little more granular. Uh, and a mousse is a very smooth item, um, creamy kind of a thing. Anyway, in, in general terms, that's the difference between a pate and a mousse. Um, we're going to make a mousse um, because I, I, I am in a situation right now where I need my food very, very soft um, to be able to get it down. That's just the way life is. Um, but there's not really a difference in you know in the taste. So what I've got here is I have a uh, a piece of salmon that uh, about a pound and a half. What uh, we did is we uh, we bought a whole salmon. It was uh, weighed in at eight pounds. That was including you know everything, not not the guts. It was cleaned, but it still had the head and everything on. Um, and we uh, we filleted it. And uh, then I took those fillets and cut those in half. So I had four, four pieces of fillet. And I put them in our electric smoker, which uh, hopefully I will get to do an episode about here in the not too distant future. We bought an electric smoker, uh, relatively inexpensive piece of equipment, you know, uh, depending on the one you buy. But it'll hold quite a bit of food. And uh, we, we put this in the smoker. Like I said, it's about a pound and a half fillet. Um, yeah, there is some prep work you got to do to it. You got to put a dry rub on it with salt and sugar and brown sugar and pepper. And then you have to rinse that off after it forms a pellicle so that the smoke will take. But yes, yeah, it may. We smoked up. This is about, let's say, a pound and a half, maybe two pounds, but nice, nice smoke bark on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this apart. Get the pin bones out of it, because salmon does have these pin bones in it that has to be pulled out. And uh, I'm going to start taking these pieces of salmon as, as I pull them off. See how beautiful that just falls apart? And that took about four hours in the smoker at uh, about 275 degrees. And I'm going to toss all of this, not the skin, because the skin has got a lot of salt taste to it. I'm going to toss just the meat into the food processor. Then I'm going to toss in some seasonings and some creme fraiche that I'll explain to you about. And uh, whip this up into a nice mousse. Real easy. It's only got like three spices, four spices, I guess, if you want to include the shallot. And then the creme fraiche. And man, boy howdy, is it got nice, big, beautiful, full flavor. So as soon as I get done pulling this apart and pulling the pin bones out, we'll get right back to you and finish with the rest of the process. Be right back. Okay, so you can see we, we pulled that off of the skin and it came right down to the skin, peeled off real nice. Yes, I know it is a terrible shame not to include this, but again, because of the fact that you put a dry rub on this to, to build up this pellicle, um, if you don't take this off, it's going to make your mousse very, very salty. Which, you know, I suppose is okay if you don't mind that, but it's just a little bit too salty for me. So, I'm going to try and think of another use for this, but, so I didn't throw it away. I did save it, but anyway, just peel that off the skin. There wasn't very many pin bones in it, actually. I did a fairly good job of laying it. So, there we have our smoked salmon meat in the food processor. To this, I'm going to add some seasoning. One shallot. Um, you could use an onion. I like shallot myself. It's a little milder. Got a nice, rich flavor to it. But whatever. Put some kind of onion in it, alright? That's all I'm saying. There. Let 
You don't gotta be real fussy. It's all gonna get chopped up in here. I'm also gonna add some onion powder. Just just regular onion. So um about a half teaspoon, quarter teaspoon. I'm gonna go with a half teaspoon because I have a little quite a bit of fish in there. I think it's a little more than a pound and a half, so I'm going to sprinkle in about a half teaspoon of onion powder. About the same amount of garlic powder. You could go with a little less garlic if you know, depending on your taste. Like so many things in cooking, you know, make it a little bit lighter. Um, It also depends on, on your smoked fish, whether you, you know, make it or buy it, and how smoky it is. So, uh, how robust you're going to want your flavors. This is uh, smoked Spanish paprika. Um, again, I'm adding more smoke flavor, but really like this stuff. About the same. You know, it's like one quarter to one teaspoon, depending on your taste. So, I'm using half teaspoons today. Yes, I will put the recipe, such as it is, in the description box down below. Now, here's where it gets dicey, folks. You can make this with uh, like a half a cup of cream cheese and a half a cup plus, depending on your consistency, a sour cream. And a little, maybe a little, like a tablespoon of heavy cream. And a tablespoon of buttermilk. And the reason for this is you want a little acid to it. Beyond just the sour cream. You want a little sharpness to it. Um, to overcome some of the, you know, the strong flavors of the smoke and the seasonings. Not going to use those today. They will be in the recipe, but the alternative... Is to use creme fraiche. However, creme fraiche is about six and a half dollars a half pint. It is bloody expensive. You can, however, make your own. Um, I got a link to a really nice video on how to make this. It's super simple. I'll include that in the description down below. Um, it's a pint of heavy whipping cream, three tablespoons of buttermilk. Then you put a coffee filter in place of the lid insert, stick it on top, mix it up, put it on top of the fridge, leave it go for 24 hours. Bring it down, take the coffee filter out, put the regular lid back in, stick it in the fridge for another 24, and you have creme fraiche. It is um, similar to sour cream it's maybe not as tart uh, because you're using the culture uh, from the live culture and buttermilk it is going to have that kind of taste of, to it a little more you know it's going to, you're going to taste this reminiscent flavor of buttermilk a little tart like that um, that's what I'm going to use uh, you could again you could use sour cream and cream cheese or I suppose you could just use sour cream, but you've got to be careful on the amount that you put in or you're going to end up with something more akin to a dip than a mousse or a pate. So, about a cup of this, I'm guessing, because that's about how much between the cream cheese and the sour cream would you normally use. You may need to use more or less, um, depending, again, on how you want the consistency. I'm not going to measure this. In cups, I'm going to put some in. I'm going to blend it until it's a consistency that, uh, well, that I can eat. Because that's really the deciding factor here for me is can I get it down? Can I get it down my gullet? <laughs> if I can, if the consistency is right that I can swallow it, then 
it's okay. It's good. It's good to go. Okay. We're gonna start faults it a little bit. And then we're just gonna let it go. Yep, clearly I'm gonna need some more creme fraiche. And I may even go ahead and toss in some heavy cream into this to, uh, to thin it up a little bit. Another, I don't know, third of a cup there maybe. So we're probably at it. Yeah. Cup and a quarter, cup and a third ish. Grab another spatula so I can poke at it. Because right now we've got this very pate kind of consistency. Which is fine. You know, you could at this point just take it out and mix it with a spatula or a spoon or whatever. And and call that good. You know, it's a it's a you you see a lot more granules in the in the meat. At this point, that's pretty much your decision. Where do you want to stop for the consistency that you're trying to achieve? Um, and my throat is not entirely trashed. I can get this down. It's just you know a little easier for me when it's thinner. Trying not to, you know, over add, add too much of the creme fraiche, but it is starting to look like I'm going to use almost this entire pint that I had made the other day. So we shall see. It's always difficult doing this on camera because. I often make little tweaks and changes to my recipe on the fly. And then I'm working without a net, which is what's our slogan, you know, no hype and no net. Here we go. Now, if you want a, a very coarse consistency and you're concerned about this turning it to mush, you don't have to use a food processor. You can use a hand mixer or your stand mixer and just beat it together. And that's going to be a lot more forgiving. And that is it. And I'm sorry, folks, I can't make this without thinking of Monty Python's Life of Brian. Or the meaning of life, I'm sorry, the meaning of life. The Salmon Moose. But anyway, Salmon Moose. Like such. It is a paste, a cream. 
salmon color. And, uh, mm, mm, mm. yeah, I can get that done. Sorry, folks. I'm a little messy. But that's it. So, shallot, onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, smoked paprika, creme fraiche, or alternatively, some sour cream and some cream cheese. And blend it to your consistency, either in a food processor or in a stand mixer or hand mixer. You can use either one uh, if you want it a little more, you know, grainy. And I suppose that many people would, would prefer that. It um, goes good on crackers. Salted or unsalted on toast squares or wedges, toasted pita wedges, whatever you like. Um, I really like it. It's uh, comparatively healthy for you. I mean, I understand. I made this crumb fresh out of heavy whipping cream. There is some fats in it. Um, well, you need some fats to live. So, yeah, you're not eating a lot of sugars or a lot of carbohydrates or anything. Uh, fish very, very healthy for you. And you're not going to live on this. Well, I may, but, you know, that's a personal thing. <laughs> so anyway, folks, that is salmon mousse or smoked fish pate. Because you can do this with any kind of smoked fish you want. It doesn't have to be salmon. Be whiting or monkfish or whatever you like. I bet it'd be really good with monkfish. I'm going to try that one these days. Um, but just... Uh, Give it a try. You can you can smoke that fish, by the way, in a countertop smoker. I'm I'm not going to go into that, but you can look that up on on YouTube. There's you know little pans that have chips in the bottom. You put your food in there and put it on the range top. And it, anyway, you, you don't have to. Or you can buy smoked fish. It's relatively easily available. I don't know. Certainly in uh, in the Midwest, it is. Um, I haven't seen it here so much except as, you know, as really thinly sliced as lox, you know, which is quite expensive. Um, I don't know, it's like four ounces of that or six ounces or whatever. It's like seven or eight dollars. Whole salmon was four ninety nine a pound. So, so I, I got me eight pounds of it for thirty nine dollars and change. Uh, you know, just under forty dollars. It, it's worth having a smoker if you're going to eat any appreciable amount of this. And it is super good. So anyway, let me know what you think down in the comment section below, folks. I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I love hearing from all of you. So please stop in, say hi, drop me a line, tell me what you think of this. I really appreciate it. If you're new here, hey, welcome. And please consider picking subscribe to come along for the adventure because we got a lot more to show you. And as always, folks, thank you for watching.